let us for a few moments meditate on the divine master and pray for the well-being of the whole humanity om stavakaya jadamasya sarvadharmaswarupine Sāpakāya jadhāmasya sarvadharma svarūpine avatāra varishtāya rāma krishnāya te rāma asatoma sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityorma Mrityangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. In the last class we were discussing about the Ramakrishna ideal. Sri Ramakrishna has set forth an ideal which can be followed by everyone irrespective of caste, color, creed. Sri Ramakrishna's Uniqueness is that he is Vijnani. He is not simply a person who has realized the Self. There is some speciality in his realization. He not only realized the Truth, but afterwards he wanted to share that experience with all spiritual seekers. So, Vijnani, that is the person of special knowledge, not merely works for the welfare of others, but has attained a greater degree of realization in the vertical scale of experience. Non-dualism may mark the highest level or degree, but in the horizontal scale of experience, there are other levels open to the illumined soul. Advaita, one without a second, may be the peak, but beyond the peak lie valleys of divine splendor. The Vijnani does not stop with the peak but moves forward to discover new realms of experience. Sri Ramakrishna says in the Gospel, the Jnani, the man of knowledge, gives up his identification with worldly things. 
He constantly discriminates, not this, not this. Through that process, he realizes the ultimate goal. Whatever that is unreal, he rejects it. Finally, he comes face to face with the absolute reality. It is like reaching the roof of a house by leaving the steps behind one by one. So that is the state of a jnani. Then what is vijnani? It is special. The vijnani who is more intimately acquainted with Brahman realizes something more. He realizes that the steps are made of the same materials as of the roof. Bricks, lime and brick dust. In those days the house was being constructed in this manner. They used the same material. That which is realized intuitively as Brahman through the eliminating process of not this, not this, is then found to have become the universe and all its being, living beings. So the Vijnani sees that the reality which is nirgun, that is without attributes, is also saguna, with attributes. Jnana, that is knowledge, I mean the spiritual knowledge, not the secular knowledge. It is based on analysis and negation. It divides reality into real and the unreal, matter and spirit, knowledge and ignorance. That is the way how the jnani proceeds in his path. Vijnana is based on synthesis and affirmation. It is more complete form of experience, more integral. Again Sri Ramakrishna says, Vijnana means knowledge with a greater fullness. He gives the example, some have heard milk, some have seen milk, and some have drunk milk. It's a good analogy. He who has merely heard of the milk is ignorant. He who has seen it is a jnani. But he who has drunk it has vijnana. That is to say, a fuller knowledge of the milk. After having the vision of God, one talks to him as if he were an intimate relative. That is vijnana. We can see in Sri Ramakrishna's life how after the realization of the Absolute Brahman, he was continuously every day communicating with Mother Kali. He was talking to her as he was talking to people. It was very natural for him to talk to God. So, that is the state of Vijnana. So, Sri Ramakrishna presents this ideal, don't be satisfied just by realizing the one without a second, 
don't be satisfied just by realizing the absolute brahman but also try to experience how god is playing in this creation so there are special marks of a vigyani shri ramakrishna points out three marks of this person of special experience the one is renunciation second one knowledge and third one compassion these are the three great marks you can find in a person who has this special experience of knowledge the relevance of the vigyani ideal in the present day world can be appreciated only when we understand how important these three values are to the modern man's life renunciation the first mark of the vigyani which i just mentioned has remained the bedrock of hindu spirituality the vedas very clearly declare nayamatma balahinena labhyah na karmana na prajaya dhanena tyagena ike amrutatvamanushuh the few people who attained immortality did it through renunciation alone not through work not through progeny nor through wealth so renunciation is the key note of the teachings of buddha and christ also even muhammad enjoined upon his followers to lead a simple life and renounce a part of their wealth as charity now the meaning of renunciation has to be properly understood renunciation doesn't mean reducing everyone to beggary it only means a return to the natural harmony and rhythm of life the basic drive in man is to acquire to possess to hoard in modern times this instinct has been given so much unrestricted freedom that a human being's body mind and talents are looked upon only as marketable commodities a person is valued not for what he is but for what he has but the more a man identifies himself with material goods the farther he moves away from his soul the more he seeks fulfillment in the external world the less his soul's aspirations get fulfilled as a result he finds life empty and meaningless in industrialized societies you see how man works like a machine without any freedom to express his soul's aspirations through his work since his labor is not really his work only alienates him from his true being so the purpose of renunciation is to free man from his slavery to external objects 
and to restore the full dignity of his soul and his intrinsic value as a human being. Many serious minded people of nowadays, they have begun to realize that fact that unrestricted satisfaction of all desires is not conducive to well-being nor is it the way to happiness or even to maximum pleasure. So renunciation is thus a fundamental need of modern man. This is the way to eradicate inequality, exploitation, poverty and injustice from society. Understood in this light, Sri Ramakrishna's practice of renunciation assumes a new significance. Holy Mother Sri Sharda Devi used to say, renunciation alone was a master's splendor. The second attribute of a Vijnani is true knowledge. Renunciation is only the negative aspect of higher life. Its positive aspect is self-realization. The modern age is witnessing a tremendous explosion in knowledge. Every day you find some new discoveries are coming up. So much of research work is going on throughout the world. They are discovering new things more and more. The empirical knowledge has assumed such vastness, power and importance. But paradoxically, Science itself is now revealing the limitations of empirical knowledge. Many eminent scientists have come to the conclusion that the solution to the mystery of the universe and the solution to the existential problems of man lie in the depths of human consciousness. Herein comes the significance of Vedanta. Vedanta regards the whole universe as a projection of consciousness. Since consciousness is inseparable from the true self, it is through self-realization that one attains the highest knowledge, knowledge of the ultimate reality known as Brahman or God. Further, Vedanta holds that true bliss is inseparable from the true self and only by realizing it can one attain ultimate fulfillment. In the realm of self-knowledge, Sri Ramakrishna was a veritable emperor. He experienced the bliss of communion with the Supreme Self in different ways. After practicing the disciplines of Hinduism, he followed the paths of Islam, he followed the path of Christianity and reached the same ultimate goal through all of them. He acquired such a wide spectrum of higher knowledge. Sri Ramakrishna has thus become an ideal of true knowledge for men of diverse creeds and beliefs. The third attribute of Vijnani is love and compassion for all people. How Sri Ramakrishna is true Vijnani that I am trying to explain through these comments. The love and kindness that ordinary people show are usually prompted by selfish or instinct, instinctual motives, instinctual motives of, of which they may not be aware. 
But the love of an illumined soul is utterly unselfish because he is free from worldly desires. He is totally selfless. All people don't have equal capacity to love. One of the most remarkable aspects of Sri Ramakrishna's personality is his superhuman capacity to love. His love knew no barriers of caste, creed or social status. Many pure-hearted young disciples like Narendranath, Rakhal and other direct disciples, they were all having the love of Sri Ramakrishna. But the people who had committed crimes, who were not pure-hearted, like Girish Chandra Ghosh, Kalipad, the sweeper, Rasika, the ruffian, Manmatha, and actresses and fallen women, they all had the same love of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna loved everyone and he tried to help them. He tried to purify them. His grace flowed upon them equally well. That's very important that we should understand. Even the most sinful person, without any hesitation, without any reservation, can approach Sri Ramakrishna for spiritual guidance and for peace and happiness. Because Sri Ramakrishna was in the state of Vijnana, he could certainly love everyone. That was his special quality. Illumined souls show love for all people in a general way. What makes Sri Ramakrishna unique is the intensity of love he was capable of. So great was his love for Narendranath, Rakhal, Baburam and other disciples that he would weep for them when they were away. There was such concentration of unselfish love in him. So Vivekananda used to say, it was Sri Ramakrishna's unflinching trust and love for me that bound me to him forever. He alone knew how to love another. Worldly people only make a show of love for selfish ends. Sri Ramakrishna's kindness, Sri Ramakrishna's compassion were as great as his love. Ordinary people may feel compassion for their friends who are suffering from some misfortune or disease and may try to help them in some way, but very often find themselves helpless. The compassion of an illumined soul is of a higher order. He feels compassion for all those who are in the bondage of ignorance, which is the root cause of all sufferings, and tries to remove it. About Sri Ramakrishna's compassion, again Swami Vivekananda writes, So now the great conclusion is that Ramakrishna has no peer. Nowhere else in this world exists such unprecedented perfection, such wonderful kindness for all, that does not stop to justify itself, such intense sympathy for man in bondage. The love and compassion that Sri Ramakrishna showed were not mere sentiments, but they were expressions of his integral experience 
of the unity of all beings in the supreme self he sublimated human love into divine love and acts of kindness into worship of god it was this doctrine that later on some way can the developed into the comprehensive philosophy of karma yoga and preached as the new gospel of service to mankind we have found that renunciation supreme knowledge and love the three attributes of a vigyani were fully manifested in shri ramakrishna and they were expressed in every possible way they were manifested in shri ramakrishna not only in their fullest measure but also integrally of course these were not the only qualities that shri ramakrishna possessed he was also the perfect embodiment of some of the normal human virtues which sweeten enrich and ennoble ordinary social life one of these is truthfulness truth was a sacred trust with shri ramakrishna and he followed it to its utmost limits even in very small matters he would not break the sanctity of truth if by chance he said that he would go to a particular place nothing could prevent him from going there even if he found there was no need to go he could not look at the face of a disciple who once told a fib in jest truthfulness had so thoroughly soaked even his unconscious mind that it reacted to the smallest trace of truthfulness which might have escaped the notice of his conscious mind there is an incident one day the devotee shambhu malik told the master that opium was good for stomach troubles and that he would give him a dose of it but later on he forgot all about it however the manager of shambhu malik's estate gave the master a packet of opium from the dispensary so shri ramakrishna took it and started walking towards kali temple but he felt his head was reeling he could not see the way then it struck him that shambhu had asked him to take the medicine from him but he had taken it from the manager instead the master at once went back to the dispensary but he could not find the manager there so he threw away the packet of medicine through the window and he said in a loud voice hello here is your opium then he left the place his discomfort immediately left him and he could see the road to the kali temple clearly another aspect of his personality which was very significant it was his childlike simplicity which charmed all those who came into contact with him this topic we shall again deal with in the next class also how shri ramakrishna is available to every one who is sincerely speaking the spiritual truth whoever wants to realize the reality he is always shown the way when he comes to shri ramakrishna a gyani a devotee 
man of action, man of meditation, everyone can have guidance and inspiration from Sri Ramakrishna. Since Sri Ramakrishna not only had the knowledge of the self, but also he knew how Shri, the Supreme God is playing through the created universe. So everything was real to Sri Ramakrishna. Everything was real. He was fully aware that God is playing everywhere. Page 598-599 It is said that God is beyond one and two. He is beyond speech and mind. To go up from the Leela to the Nitya and come down again from the Nitya to the Leela is mature Bhakti. I love that song of yours about aspiring to reach the lotus feet of the Divine Mother. It is enough to know that everything depends on the grace of God, but one must pray to God. It will not do to remain inactive. The lawyers gives all the arguments and finishes his pleading by saying to the judge, I have said all I have to say. Now the decision rests with your honor. After a few minutes, Sri Ramakrishna said to Nilakanta, You sang so much in the morning and now you have taken the trouble to come here. But here everything is honorary. Nilakanta said, Why so? Master said smilingly, I know what you will say. Nilakanta said, I shall get a precious gem from here. Master said, You really have that precious gem. What will you gain by adding again the letter A to Ka? If you didn't have the gem, should I like your song so much? Ram Prasad had attained divine realization. That is why his songs appeal so much. I had already planned to hear your music. Later on, Niyogi too came here to invite me. The master was sitting on the small couch. He told Nilakanta that he would like to hear a song or two about the Divine Mother. Nilakanta sang two songs with his companions. When the master heard the second song, he stood up and went into Samadhi. Presently, he began to dance in an ecstasy of divine love. Nilakanta and the devotees sang and danced around him. Then Nilakanta sang a song about Shiva and the master danced with the devotees. When the singing was over, Sri Ramakrishna said to Nilakanta, I should like to hear that song of yours I heard in Calcutta. Master Mahashi said, About Sri Gauranga? Master said, Yes, yes. Nilakanta sang the song. The beautiful Gauranga, the youthful dancer, fair as molten gold. Sri Ramakrishna sang again and again the line, Everything is swept away by the onrush of love and danced with Nilakanta and the other devotees. Those who saw that indescribable dancing were never to forget it. The room was filled with people, all intoxicated with divine joy. It seemed as if Chaitanya himself were dancing with his companions. Manomohan was in ecstatic mood. He was a devotee of Sri Ramakrishna and a brother-in-law of Rakal. Several ladies of his family had come with him. They were witnessing this divine music and dancing from North Veranda. Sri Ramakrishna sang again, this time 
अबाउट गौरांग एंड नित्यानंद बिहोल्ड द टू ब्रदर्स हैव कम हु वीप वाइल चैंटिंग हरीज नेम ही डांस्ड विथ नीलकंठ एंड द अदर डेवोटिस इम्प्रोवाइजिंग द लाइन बिहोल्ड द टू ब्रदर्स हैव कम दे हु आर मैंड विथ लव ऑफ राधा should stop here so with respect to spiritual experience there is much more to experience than what ordinarily we experience in their life if you come to shri ramakrishna you will appreciate the experience of the superior knowledge which shri ramakrishna calls vijnana and his grace is open to everyone first of all you have to practice discipline and realize the truth and then realize the highest truth and then share that joy with all the people in the universe that's the significance of shri ramakrishna's ideal any question to ask any comments yeah, we shall conclude chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bought for weary souls various sort thy name so long in each and every name thy power resides no time so set no right so needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my nature who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name O oh, my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant and sing glory the name of the lord o oh, lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or revenue the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many things as i may be reborn as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fear of pollution is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet o oh, how i long for the day when an instant separation from thee o lord will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thy arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and the alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all rejoice everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous reign tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free 
may good be dead all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be freed from calamity may holy man live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased he being satisfied the whole universe feels satisfied